I'm Geographers, welcome to your little help video for your water and carbon cycles cap for this week. I'm just going to talk you through how you might want to go about approaching each of the questions. The first two questions you've got um, are four mark questions. Um, so they're the same as on your cap for last week, um, in so much as you want to be making four distinct, detailed points um, about the topic in question for each of those questions. So with the first one, um, outline an example of positive feedback within the water cycle. So we want to be thinking maybe by starting off by defining what positive feedback is. And if you remember, that is something that has an amplifying effect on a system. Um, and then you want to make sure that within your example, you're giving um, some detailed explanation. You really want to un unpick the steps which occur, um, which cause that change to either get bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller and smaller. That would be an example of positive feedback. So have a look back in your notes um, and use an example related to the water cycle and make sure it's an example of positive rather than negative feedback. You don't want to fall into that trap with that first question. For the second question, you have been asked to outline flows within the water cycle operating on a hill slope. So um, important that we think about the command word in this question, outline. This is where we're giving a brief description. It's not the same as listing. So I don't want to see just a simple list of all the flows that happen on um, a hill slope within the water cycle. Um, and that bit the hill slope is quite important as well. We'll come on to that in a second. But basically we're thinking about the drainage basin hydrological cycle now. And we're thinking about how the water moves around that system. So when the rain falls, maybe onto a slope, what happens to it? Can you describe some of the transfers of water? Um, make sure that we're not writing about any stores of water. We just want to be focusing on the, the flows and the movements and the transfers of water. Um, and as I said, really focus on just what's going on on the hill slope part. So think about what's happening on the surface, maybe what's happening on the, um, within the soil as well, um, or between the two of them. And that should help you cover what you need to cover in that question. The third question on your cap for this week is a new style of question, um, and it's a six mark question. Um, the question says figure one and figure two show information about the nature of a range of global stores of fresh water. And then we have figure one, which shows us a graph showing um, the different stores of water, like groundwater and vegetation, and the atmosphere. And we have a scale up the left hand side here, up the y axis, which shows us the volume of fresh water. Um, and that is in cubic kilometres. Don't forget to include that unit of measurement when you're um, writing about the size of different stores. So for example, don't say that vegetation stores 1000. Okay, tell me it stores 1000 cubic kilometers of water. Um, note that the scale up the y axis as well is not um, how we might normally see it on a graph. This is a logarithmic scale. So we're going up from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000. So each of these lines in between the major points on our axis um, down here are going to be worth 100. Up here, they're going to be worth 1,000. Up here, they're going to be worth 10,000. So just be careful of that when you're counting up or down that axis. Um, the second figure that you have um, gives us a little bit more simply the approximate length of time that this fresh water remains in different stores. What we want to do within this question, um, because the command word here is to analyse the nature of these global stores of fresh water. That means we want to describe the trends and the patterns that we see in a little bit of detail. We want to focus on the trends, we want to focus on the evidence, um, and within that we want to give some data manipulation. And we also want to consider any anomalies that might exist, anything that doesn't fit the pattern that we might expect to find. So using this little acronym T is quite a good way of remembering the things that you've got to do. Within your evidence bit, when you're quoting some numbers or um, 
lengths of time from the graph, make sure you are manipulating that data. For example, don't just tell me that vegetation stores a thousand and the atmosphere stores 10,000. Tell me how many times bigger the store in the atmosphere is than vegetation. Work out how much bigger or smaller something is or how much of an increase or decrease there is. Get your calculator out and do some calculations to help you support your points. The same goes with these residence times. Yeah, don't just quote numbers from here. Tell me how much of a difference there is between some of those numbers. A um, couple of other things you need to do. You want to make sure that you are trying to link the graph and the table. So do they show a similar pattern or not? If so, what is that pattern? And the other thing to remember with these questions that just say analyze, they are simply asking you to make sense of the data that you've got in front of you. And they're not asking for you to offer any explanations about why some stores are bigger than others or why the residence time is longer in one store than another. It's just asking you to make sense of the data that you've got in front of you, to really focus on those things in this list here, trends, evidence and anomalies. So this is very much a descriptive piece of work using your skills as a geographer um, of picking out bits of data to help show what those patterns and trends are. So don't fall into the trap of feeling like you've got to explain patterns. You've just got to describe what they are um, and unpick the patterns in as much detail as you can. So we're looking to write a little bit more for these six mark questions than we may have done um, for the four mark questions. You know, a good um, large paragraph of writing, a um, couple of paragraphs, maybe one on each of the, um, the figures and then trying to link them together is about what you should be writing in response to this question.